How's everyone doing? Today I have a huge horror Blu-ray and DVD collection update with 22 pickups. And if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one of these is your favorite. And all right, so these, this is essentially like a combined update of uh, some horror pickups that I've had in the past couple weeks. So I decided to do like one huge update and kind of go through them and uh, I'm going to talk about them kind of quickly. I don't want this to be a super long update. In fact, the last update I did that had just like a small portion of these ended up being like a really long video because I go off on a lot of these side tangents and I like talking movies though. Uh, that's really, I don't want to just show what I got and that's the end of it. I want to talk about why I picked it up, why I, you know, like the movie, certain things I like about the director or actors. Even if I haven't seen the movie, there's stuff that I could talk about. So uh, I don't know, that's, that's the whole point of this, talking movies. So let's first up get into it. Two releases from Vestron Video Collector Series. So happy that they're releasing again. Let me know what your favorite Vestron Video Collector Series release is and what you'd like to see them release in the future. Little Monsters, I grew up on this one. Uh, I love the cast here. Fred Savage, Harry Mandel. Uh, and then there's a big tie-in for uh, The Wonder Years, which was my all-time favorite TV show. Uh, I loved that one growing up as a kid. Uh, you've got, uh, obviously, Fred Savage as Kevin Arnold, but you also have his little brother, Ben Savage, in here who uh, was in at least one episode that I remember of um, The Wonder Years. And then you also have Daniel Stern in here, who was uh, the father in Little Monsters, but he was also older Kevin Arnold doing the narration uh, voiceover work on Wonder Years. But this one freaked me out as a kid for the ending. Boy, when his face got all creepy. Uh, that one terrified me when I was younger. <laughs> But I remember the, the one scene here is my favorite scene is the one bully in here was also Buzz from Home Alone. But it's like, who pissed in my apple juice? Love it. And it's so crazy to me that Harry Mandel, you know, that he has such a big germaphobe issue now. But he was doing movies like Little Monsters and Walk Like a Man. Walk Like a Man, he was like rolling around in dirt and mud and stuff. Maybe the, those filming experiences drove him to be that way. I think he's gotten a little bit better now, but I still think he doesn't shake hands, which I guess in this day and age, it's actually kind of smart. He was ahead of the curve there. But uh, he plays this uh, blue... Uh, kind of like demon creature and uh, it's just a hilarious movie uh, like a childhood favorite of mine i'm looking forward to revisiting it there's a bunch of special features on there and again uh, this one actually comes with a digital copy both of these i think they're the first vestron video collector series releases to have digital copies so if you're a fan of the streaming there you go uh, digital copies and all that stuff uh, i've never really used digital copies i think only a couple times ever so I'm more physical media. This is David Cronenberg's uh, feature length directorial debut. I haven't seen this one yet. Looking forward to checking it out. I've loved everything I've seen from David Cronenberg. Let me know what your favorite David Cronenberg movie is. Uh, very notably known for, you know, body horror, great Canadian horror movies. Uh, and his son is actually really good uh, as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing his son's uh, newest one coming out. But this is basically, it's set in uh, Montreal in this uh, luxury apartment complex. And there's these like parasitic slug things that uh, turns people into like violent sex crazed maniacs. And uh, yeah, it kind of reminds me of Slither right there with those, the look right there to the parasitic slugs. But I always remember this guy like being on the cover of like an old DVD and stuff. But uh, looking forward to checking this one out finally. Uh, again, David Cronenberg's done some great films. Uh, so definitely looking like this is like, you know, again, it's his, his first feature length directorial debut right there. But uh, I'm still expecting great things from it. Next up is Cut Off, which is a German like serial killer movie. It's cat and mouse game. This uh, guy who is uh, he's like a coroner. He's doing an autopsy, and uh, he finds inside the skull uh, a little like note, and it has uh, his estranged daughter's phone number on it. And his, uh, he finds out his daughter was kidnapped. And he has to you know follow the the clues. And there's like all these other bodies. And he enlists the help of this girl who just happened to be there and just decides to go along with everything. I feel like that's kind of crazy. Uh, you know, you'd call the police and, you know, obviously he can't call the police because the serial killer will, you know, kill the daughter. Um, I feel like you have to suspend disbelief a whole lot with this one. And uh, there's certain things that don't add up. Like the ending, there's like they try to do too many twists and turns. I think it's still a good movie, still worth checking out though. I wanted more from like the winter aspects because that's one of the things that drew me to this. They said there's a winter storm. Uh, and that's why it's called Cut Off. They're on this island and it's kind of cut off from the mainland during the storm. Uh, but they don't really, they don't utilize it enough. I want to see more movies with a horror, uh, with a snowy setting, more horror movies with a snowy setting. Uh, especially, you know, I feel like Friday the 13th could be one. Uh, you know, the first one was shot in Jersey. I'm in Jersey. It snows here. And, you know, Jason takes Manhattan. It snows in New York. Uh, so that should be a thing. And uh, let me know what your favorite snowy setting horror movie is. 
John Carpenter's The Thing is my all-time favorite movie. And then, you know, The Shining, Misery, 30s of Night is one of my favorites, too. I love how they utilize the, the snow now when the blood really pops in the white snow. And the idea of it, too, in Barrow, Alaska, 30 Days of Night, the vampires there. I feel like that should have been utilized more, too. There's a Tales from the Crypt episode that had that. But then there's, like, a Swedish film called Frostbitten that does the same kind of thing where, you know, vampires in a place where there's extended uh, darkness. But that should there should be more movies with that. And Cut Off is a German film, and I used to live in Germany for four and a half years as a kid. Sprecher Sie Deutsch. So I, uh, there's a few little things here and there that I can keep up with, but I didn't retain the language when I moved back to the States. Uh, but I do love the country, beautiful country. I love the old world architecture of Europe in general. It was nice to see a German horror film. I haven't seen too many German horror films out there. And uh, this one also had a lot of autopsy scenes that were just a little too believable. <laughs> Uh, you know, there was an autopsy of Jane Doe recently, which is a really good film dealing with that. But there's a lot of autopsy scenes in here, too, and very realistic looking. So they did a great job with the makeup and gore effects and things like that. Cut Off is definitely worth checking out. Uh, not perfect, needs to be fine-tuned a bit, but still a really good uh, serial killer uh, mystery movie. Next up is MFA, which I haven't seen yet. This is from uh, Dark Sky Films. The same with uh, Cut Off, Dark Sky Films. This stars uh, Clint Eastwood's daughter, Francesca Eastwood, and she's in a college. And I'm MFA. I mean, does it, what does it stand for? Let me know what you think it stands for. Motherfudging awesome? Probably not. But I assume that it explains it in the movie. I was thinking maybe it could be like Master of Fine Arts because she's in college, but I don't know. I feel like it's something different. Uh, but so she's uh, assaulted at a party and uh, the college doesn't really help her and she's trying to find some other survivors and she becomes a vigilante. Uh, Clifton Collins Jr. is in here too. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be very straightforward. Uh, there's recently a movie called Revenge, very stylistic and it sounds like in the same vein. Uh, and it's, you know, obviously very much like I Spin on Your Grave movies like that. So uh, I really like her as an actress though from what I've seen her in. And uh, I like the cover too with the, the, the neon colors. Like you've got the blue and then the pink hair. I don't know, I'm just expecting like an 80s, like synth pop kind of uh, uh, soundtrack going on. But looking forward to checking that one out. Next up are three films from um, Umbrella Entertainment, which is a company from Australia. And most of the releases, even though it says Region B, it's actually Region A compatible. So it'll play here in the US. This is uh, the Day of the Dead Ultimate Edition. And how awesome is that artwork right there? Dr. Tongue. Uh, let me know who your favorite zombie is of all time. Bub right there's got to be in the list. Tar Man for probably my favorite choice. Those are two of like the top ones. And there you go. Swing Tray. And then you even have the disc artwork right there. And then there is the reverse wall artwork. I switched to this one. Uh, and Australia has, you know, Australia, Germany, uh, England, a bunch of other countries have the, the ratings logo right there, which are really obstructive, obtrusive, ugly. So thankfully, uh, a lot of companies are doing reversible artwork where you can change it and it doesn't have that. So I dig that. And that cover is amazing. Uh, let me know what your favorite uh, George A. Romero movie is and what your favorite movie of the Dead Trilogy is. And I like the social commentary for his uh, Dead Trilogy movies. Uh, for me, Day of the Dead is my least favorite, but I still love it. It's a great zombie film. Um, Dawn of the Dead is my all-time favorite. I always wanted there to be a zombie outbreak when I saw it as a kid. I was like, you know, me and my friends could hang out and live in the mall and fight zombies. I just thought that was awesome. It's probably not the message I should have taken away from it. But Night of the Living Dead is just iconic as well. It's one of the earlier horror movies I ever saw. But nice looking uh, release. Ton of special features on there. And then next up is uh, Two From Hell, Rob Zombie. And I already switched the artwork. It's just the same artwork, but with uh, the ratings logo down there. And uh, let me know your favorite of the Rob Zombie, uh, you know, Firefly trilogy is essentially. You've got Three from Hell is the newest one, which is essentially more about baby. And I'm okay with that, really. But uh, my favorite is House of a Thousand Corpses by far. I feel like most people prefer Devil's Rejects. And I actually do like Rob Zombie. I feel like he gets a lot of hate. But I, I love the, the gritty, dirty, grindhouse, like 70s feel to a lot of his movies. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he does in the future. I really love Lords of Salem up until like the last 15, 20 minutes kind of went downhill for me, but I still love that movie overall. It was coming so close to being like a, an all time witch modern cult classic for me. Uh, but love these films and a ton of special features on here. Sid Haig got to meet him a couple times. Super nice. May he rest in peace. Captain Spaulding, iconic character. They're all, you know, they all play their roles very well. Very iconic. Bill Mosley, Sid Haig, Sherry Moon Zombie. Next up is Death Warmed Up, which is a New Zealand film. I remember hating it when I first saw it. I'm looking forward to revisiting it, though. Um, yeah, there, it's in 1983. And this does have the 
original New Zealand VHS cut. So I'm looking forward to checking that out, seeing if that helps the viewing experience. But I remember they're like in this secluded area, a group of friends go there. There's like a mad scientist and drilling people's uh, brains and holes in their brains and their skulls and stuff and uh, injecting people with the serum that made them like psychotic killers. And so just craziness abound, but I remember not really caring for it. Next up is the newest grudge movie, which was really good. I feel like it got a lot of hate and criticism. I think unfairly so because people thought it was a remake. It's not a remake. It's just kind of a, a new like story in the grudge uh, franchise and realm. And I love the cast here too, uh, especially Andrea Riseborough, who it was in Mandy. She was so good in Mandy. But uh, you also have Jackie Weaver, Lynn Shea, Betty Gulpin, uh, Gilpin, uh, John Cho, uh, Demian Bashir. A uh, really creepy and atmospheric film. And uh, again, some really creeptastic moments in here and worth checking out. Give it a fair chance. It's not a remake. It's just a, a new take on the grudge, a uh, new tale of it, essentially. And, you know, that's, they're coming to a home in America. Um, I, I really enjoyed the heck out of it. So uh, I think it's unfair. I feel like people made their mind up about this movie before they even saw it. They're saying, oh, it's another remake. We don't need another remake. Shut up. Just, I get it. We, I, There's, a, you know, creativity. But this takes, a, you know, a concept and, you know, adds more to it. And uh, it was creepy. It's it's worth checking out. I, just, I feel like it was so, I was so mad about all the hate that this got because it was unfair. And uh, I get it. Everybody hates uh, remakes. But there's some really great remakes out there. Let me know what your favorite horror remake is. And let me know what your favorite uh, horror movie is that people hate that you really liked. This isn't my, would be my choice, but I think it's, uh, it's worth some praise and worth checking out. Next up is The Believers, which is another one um, that got a lot of uh, hate and criticism, too. Uh, negative reviews is from 1987, uh, kind of dealing with, uh, you know, a cult, Caribbean cult, that uh, ritualistic child murders and Brujera, Santera, uh, um, Santeria, there you go. <laughs> and, you know, witchcraft and voodoo and stuff like that. I like the cast in here, too. Uh, Martin Sheen, Helen uh, Shaver, Robert Loggia, Richard Masur, uh, Jimmy Smith was really good in here too. The guy with the eyes in here still to this day creeps me the heck out. Uh, but this is a Twilight Time release. I love what they do with their releases. A lot of times it does have uh, interior artwork. This one does not, but it has the booklet in here and uh, just you know behind the scenes information and details. I wish they were still releasing today. There's two Twilight Time releases. Most of the releases are limited to 3,000 copies. But I, I think, you know, their releases show that they are a fan of film. Just some simple things from the packaging, the way that they have the technical aspects boxed off so it's really easy to find, like the runtime, the year it was made, all the technical stuff. A lot of times uh, it's hard to find them. Sometimes they don't even have them in the back for certain companies. But Twilight Time did a great job here. I love the heck out of this one. Uh, great cast. Um, and then just the whole concept. And again, that one character just creeps me the heck out. <laughs> but yeah, so basically the, the intro scene was awesome too. Uh, kind of like unforgettable but uh they uh, once the mother passes away they move to uh the city and uh the lead character martin sheen is like a police psychologist and uh he gets involved in these uh you know brujera cases and uh his son gets involved too and um richard Mercer, who's in john carpenter's the thing is like the best uh friend here he's the best best friend ever for what he does at the end of the movie um but really helps him out but yeah i love that one so much i feel like it got a lot of negative reviews and I don't know why, because I thought it was awesome. If you like uh, cult movies, dealing with that kind of stuff, uh, definitely worth checking out. And uh, next up is Dragon Wick, which is more drama, gothic, historic, but it does have some horror elements in there. Basically, the big thing about the is that there's like a ghost in this Dragon Wick mansion. It's about this uh, character who passed away, and she haunts the place and haunts like the relatives uh, from what happened to her and how she wasn't allowed to see the, the child of hers. And, you know, you can hear her laughing and hear her playing musical instruments, but only if you're part of that family line. Uh, you've got Vincent Price and Jean Tierney in here. Vincent Price plays this patroon, which is like a, this Dutch royalty, essentially. Uh, and he has this land in uh, New York, and he has all these farmers that farm his land, and they have to pay, like, essentially, like, taxes. It'll give him part of the crops or money to farm the land. And there's, like, a big revolt about that. But uh, Gene Tierney is uh, a distant cousin who, which is kind of creepy to think that he wants a romantic, and they actually get married in the movie. Uh, but I guess that's a thing back in the day, and then, you know, especially royalty-wise, that was a thing, too, which is weird. Uh, but so, yeah, Gene Tierney lives in a farm in Connecticut. She always wants to get out of there, and her family's really religious. And Vincent Price writes to them and says, oh, can one of your daughters come to Dragonwick to take care of my daughter, who's this like, little kid? And um, he's a very dastly character in here. 
And I feel like, you know, the horror elements are very light here again with the, the ghost aspect. Uh, but I feel like it's always in the back of your mind thinking about it. And they utilize it a couple times. And I feel like those scenes are really chilling to me. Uh, they kind of stand out for me. And I love uh, Vincent Price in this. And I love Gene Tierney in this. Great cinematography, great acting in here. Uh, again, it's more so about the drama and the gothic and historical aspects. But there's a little bit of uh, horror in here. Uh, but the special features in here are awesome too. Audio commentary with the film historian. There's uh, Exploring Dragon Wick. And then there's uh, Gene Tierney, a shattered portrait. What she went through in her life was really sad and traumatic. Uh, and then there's Vincent Price, versatile villain. Those are both Biography A&E Network specials on here. And both are really good. So really nice release. And uh, for a lot of times when uh, Twilight Time did the clear cases, they would have interior artwork. Uh, if they had the blue cases, they usually did not. And then I like when they have, uh, on the booklets, they'll have like the old school poster artwork. And they have behind the scenes information and uh, photos and stuff. So I love when they have that. Uh, and then the disc artwork too. So... Twilight Time was awesome. I wish they would come back. Uh, again, limited releases, uh, you know, special features. Uh, a lot of times they were light on the special features, but still they, when they had them, they were really good. And the transfers and just the packaging just and the titles that they chose were, were great. Next up is 80s uh, vampire movie Vamp. She's tastic. I love the cast in here. Great cast chemistry. The special features were awesome in here. Uh, Grace Jones is a vampire. The most uh, terrifying part is when she's stripping. <laughs> uh, but I loved hearing them talk about how she was always late on set and how she would have like sex toys with her and just she would get naked. Just crazy stuff about that. Billy Drago in here too. Apparently he left set one day. He went like to a convenience store uh, and people were like uh, looking at him like he was crazy because he was still all in his like you know makeup and just the uh, his his wardrobe and stuff. Uh, but so basically it's uh, the two leads here are. Um, Chris uh, Makepeace, who wasn't in a, they were, he wasn't in a lot of movies for, he had a big layoff for a while, I guess, got out of the business, and then Robert Rustler, too, and uh, from Freddy's Revenge, but uh, they're the two leads, they're pledging this fraternity, and they have to get strippers for the fraternity, and so they, uh, they're kind of in a, an area that's kind of secluded in the middle of nowhere, so they have to go to the big city, and uh, they meet up with a uh, Getty Watanabe, who was uh, Long Duck Dong in 16 Candles. No matter what he does in his career, he's always going to be Long Duck Dong. Uh, but he's great in here. He kind of like steals the show in a lot of the scenes. Very obnoxious character, but he's rich. And uh, they have to borrow his car, so uh, they have to take him uh, with them to go there to uh, the strip club. And Grace Jones is the vampire there and the lead and uh, in the strip club. And then they meet uh, Dee Pfeiffer, who is so good in here. I love her character. She's probably like my favorite part of the movie. Uh, and uh, she was so cute, so charming, so gorgeous, and just great. She's also kind of a little flighty, uh, but you know, she keeps saying, you know, you remember me? And he doesn't remember her at all. And they, obviously there's a romance aspect there too. They have to fight to survive against all the vampires. And then Billy Drago's in there too. I think it's kind of like an albino character in here. Um, and there's also a scene with like this little girl vampire that I always thought was really creepy. Let me know what your favorite uh, vampire movie is. I love that artwork, by the way. Look at that. That's so awesome. And then you've got the booklet in there, too. There's D.D. Pfeiffer. Um, but, yeah, really good cast. Great cast chemistry. And, uh, yeah, favorite vampire movie for me. I feel like a lot of people would choose, like, Dragula, Nosferatu, uh, or even, you know, Lost Boys, Fright Night, stuff like that. But uh, Third Days of Night is my favorite vampire movie. Again, so setting horror. I love it. I love that concept, too. Barrow, Alaska, the 30 Days of Night, utilizing that. Uh, I feel like more movies should do that. Uh, there's Frostbite in a Swedish movie that had that for a bit, you know, vampires in an area with extended uh, darkness. I think that's awesome. Again, there was an old um, uh, Tales from the Crypt episode that had that, but there should be more movies that actually have that. So, yeah, again, the blood pops in the white snow. Um, I just love the cast there. I love how that wasn't like a Hollywood cop-out ending. Uh, you know, usually there's like a lot of Hollywood happy endings for those kind of movies, and it wasn't really the case for 30 Days of Night. So I definitely appreciated that. All right, I got a bunch more to go through, so let's go. Mama, which was uh, directed by uh, Andy Muschietti, who went from this and then directed It Chapter 1 and then It Chapter 2. I'm actually looking forward to what he does next. I think he's going to do Attack on Titan. Uh, but I thought this was a little bit overhyped. I'm going to revisit it. I remember seeing it when it first came out. And uh, Jessica Chastain's in here. These two girls are found in like the middle of the woods. Apparently their parents were killed, and the uncle takes them in. And uh, they're like feral kids and like weird things start happening. Jessica Chastain's like, what's going on here? I don't know about all this. Uh, but looking forward to revisiting that one. 
and it's produced by Guillermo del Toro. It's Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro presents. I feel like a lot of people just saw his name and just was like, oh, they thought that he directed it. And that wasn't the case at all. It was kind of like Eli Roth with Clown. Uh, Eli Roth was a producer on there. He didn't direct Clown. Uh, but all of the director of Clown and the creator of Clown uh, uploaded a short film of that and said it was directed by Eli Roth just to get more attention and exposure. And that worked. And in fact, Eli Roth reached out to him. So it's kind of smart marketing, I guess. But it kind of annoys me a bit that people get tricked by it. Uh, next up is a double feature from Mill Creek, Mind Warp and Brain Scan. I remember loving Brain Scan as Edward Furlong in here. There's the character of Trickster. Uh, look how creepy that is. It's like a video game. I remember the old DVD I had, loving the disc artwork. And I was going to do a whole video of like the best hard DVD disc artwork. And uh, I never did that. I had like a whole notebook of video ideas that just never, just collected dust. But I want to start doing that more, uh, more concept videos and stuff like that. But Mind Warp has Bruce Campbell in it and Angus Scrim. Um, and basically it's kind of set in a, this is a post Holocaust world. There's a woman that has like this uh, computer and uh, the computer like transforms her to this uh, wasteland. There's these monsters that are called crawlers and Bruce Campbell has to like save her and they have to go against this uh, overlord called Seer played by Angus Scrim. So it sounds interesting. I haven't seen that one. I think that might've had a uh, Twilight Time release before, which is out of prep mind warp. Um, so next up is Legion, which I think, also gets a lot of hate. I love this one. Uh, very heavy on the religious uh, aspect. Very overt about this angel that comes down to earth to save humanity. And I remember the scene with old Lee. That scene was super creepy to me. Um, but yeah, I just loved it. Again, it's very, you know, good versus evil. I like the cast a lot here too. Uh, you know, I've got Dennis Quaid, Kate Walsh, uh, Willa Holland's in here, Kevin Durand, um, Charles S. Dutton. Uh, there's a bunch of Tyrese is in here, Lucas Black, Paul Bettany. Great cast. I just love the heck out of this one. And it's another one that gets it's just hate, and I just I don't get it. I thought it was a fun movie, some good tension in it. Uh, Outpost Rise of the Spence Knots, which I got at the Dollar Tree. The first one doesn't have a Blu-ray release, but the second one does. I think this is the third one. Uh, I didn't think this one was that good. It, below average, I'd say. Uh, there's a couple good scenes in there. Like the scene with this guy, there's like a, this hulking beast uh, you know, Nazi zombie kind of character. Uh, it's basically about these Russian soldiers who fall victim to these Nazis. And the majority of the movies shot in this like underground bunker and they have to fight to survive. And they have these, uh, you know, Nazi super soldiers there and they're trying to inject them and trying to turn these people into super soldiers that can be controlled and stuff like that. And uh, I didn't really like how it played out. I didn't like the ending to it. Uh, I feel like it was kind of derivative and nothing really stood out aside from like like one quick shot of this like creepy character in like a cell and then like the this creature this guy right here too uh, and i wanted they kind of underutilized him i wanted more from that but overall it wasn't that great next up are the dvds summer camp which is a Lionsgate release an infected movie about the camp counselors and there's a virus outbreak and i like what they do with that something kind of unique and different with it um with how it originated and stuff like that but everything else is kind of formulaic but i still liked it a lot uh it's definitely beloved uh, uh above average and worth checking out i feel like nobody really has heard about this one i've never seen anybody talk about it but uh, i feel like it's partly because it was a dvd only release like taking of deborah logan i didn't feel like a lot of people talked about that one now it has a blu-ray release i feel like people don't even know it had a blu-ray release uh recent one i just came uh, across that just kind of by accident somebody mentioned it to me i was like oh wow really i thought it only had a dvd release there's also the movie hidden from warner brothers uh came out a few years ago that deserves a blu-ray release i think it would have gotten more exposure if it had a blu-ray release not to be confused with uh hidden which is a warner archive release like an older one that was uh, a fun one but the newer one called hidden and then even the movie the haunt which is a dvd only release which i think is actually going to get a blu-ray release now which i'm excited for uh, but that is one that I think is awesome and super underrated, and partly because it was a DVD-only release. And I feel like a lot of physical media people, they, they pick up just the Blu-ray sometimes, and if it had uh, like a company like Scream Factory or Aero Video was releasing it, like a premium company, it would get a lot more exposure. Uh, the Haunt is really awesome, though. I feel like movies like Hell World, I thought Haunt was way better. Uh, but yeah, this one was a really good Infected Outbreak movie, uh, worth checking out. Next up is Cruel Summer. This is a uh, a Wild Eye releasing film. I pretty much hated everything I've seen from them. This is by far the best thing I've seen from them. I remember last year I did like a Saturday night vlog where I was watching like uh, Jurassic Dead. And that was like one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Like that came out like a year ago and then less than a year it was in the Dollar Tree. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, most of their stuff, you know, very low budget, very independent, very uh, terrible. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this one right here is very much in the vein of Eden Lake. Eden Lake had Kelly Riley from uh, Yellowstone, which love that show, love her. Uh, and then uh, Michael Fassbender, who's a great actor in a ton of stuff. But those are, uh, they were both in there before they really blew up. And uh, really, 
there's a British horror movie that's a punch in the gut. This is very much a punch in the gut too, without a happy ending. Let me know what your favorite horror movie is that doesn't have a happy ending. Uh, basically about these teens who take this uh, teenager who's autistic into the woods and torture him essentially because it all started with this lie about how this one, the lead guy, this bully, uh, they said that his ex-girlfriend hooked up with the autistic kid, which obviously clearly everybody knew wasn't really the case. And there's this girl that kind of goes along with anything that the bully says. And this other guy has kind of like an epiphany, but it's too late by that time. Um, it's violent. It's a punch in the gut. It's uh, mean-spirited. It doesn't have a happy ending, uh, but it's very effective. It's one of those ones that I thought about long after viewing, but it's one that I feel like if I recommended this to somebody, they're going to be like, why'd you recommend this to me? It was, you know, so sad and awful and terrible and violent. Well, that's kind of part of it. Like when you get a movie that's effective like that, uh, it, it's, you know, even though it's low budget, it, it, they did a great job with it. Same thing with Eden Lake. Uh, it was very effective, uh, partly because it didn't have a happy ending. I see a lot of people complain about that. I was like, that's what I loved about it. It wasn't a cop out. It wasn't a Hollywood happy ending. Not everything has a happy ending. Most times it doesn't, I feel like. Uh, a lot of these horror movies, realistically, are going to play out the way that it sometimes does. Let It Snow, which I haven't seen yet, but it's a snowy setting horror movie. I think it's shot in the country of Georgia about these, uh, this couple that goes there to go uh, snowboarding, free ride snowboarding, and they don't listen to the people that tell them don't go on this mountain. And they go there, and apparently there is a masked snowmobile rider there killing people. And they have to fight to survive. Uh, look at that creepy snowman on the back. Looks like it has like, a human hand. But uh, can't wait to check this one out. This is a Lionsgate release. Uh, DVD only release, but from the clips I saw, it looked amazing. Like, it looks like it's going to be, you know, not just a little bit of snowy setting, but like the majority of it's shot in the snow. And I love that. I want to see more of that. Santa's Slay, a cheese-tastic Christmas horror movie. Let me know what your favorite Christmas horror movie is outside of like Gremlins and Black Christmas. Uh, you know, there was recently Krampus, which I think was amazing. And uh, Krampus, directed by Michael Doherty, directed Trick or Treat. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the follow-up for Trick or Treat as well. I think Sam has become like a horror icon. Krampus, to me, I think is like a modern uh, classic and one of the best uh, Christmas horror movies now. But this is cheesy. It's Bill Goldberg as a murderous Santa Claus. Santa Claus apparently isn't uh, good in here, at least. He's evil. And the only reason he was kept away for so long is because he lost a, a bet to an angel for like a thousand years. So the bet's over. And uh, he's down on earth killing people now. There's so many crazy, ridiculous scenes in here. He's like at a strip club at one point. I think he's like spraying on the stripper pole after he touches her before. Something weird like that. But I just, I thought it was hilarious. And the intro scene in here is awesome with uh, uh, James Caan, um, Fran Drescher, the nanny, uh, Rebecca Gayhart, Chris Kattan. Uh, that intro scene is by far the best part of the movie and just awesome and hilarious. But this is a cheese-tastic fun time. And I feel like if this got like a Scream Factory released, A, they'd charge like 30 bucks and I'd probably buy it. But um, I feel like this would get like, do really well for a Scream Factory release. Or, you know, Arrow Video too, but a premium label like that. I could see something like, like this movie deserves a Blu-ray release, I think. It's, it's not a great movie, but it's cheesy fun. I mean, it's Bill Goldberg as a murder Santa Claus. What more do you want, you know? <laughs> Uh, next up are two Australian crocodile attack movies. Let me know what your favorite crocodile or gator attack movie is. Recently, Crawl came out, you know, gators. Uh, I feel like uh, on the news, there was meth gators in, in Florida. Of course, Florida. Only in Florida. People were apparently flushing their meth and it was getting into the uh, sewer system, getting into the ecosystem for the gators, and uh, they were eating it and craziness. I wasn't a huge fan of Crawl. I thought you have to suspend disbelief so much. But with that, like, people were getting broken legs and out chasing the gators. Just so many different things. It's over the top and ridiculous. I don't know. that. I, don't know, I feel like it was one of the only people that felt that way. But both of these are awesome. Rogue and then Black Water. I feel like nobody knows about Black Water. And personally, I love it. And I like it better than Rogue. I'm going to talk about Black Water first. And, you know, this says it came out in 2008. And this one in 2006. But I thought they both came out in the same year. Maybe this one was made uh, earlier. But they might have been released at the same time. Kind of a deal. Um, but yeah, this one right here is, you know, based on true story. It says it's, um, a couple and then the couple's sister and they go on this, uh, gator tour and then the tour guide immediately gets killed by a gator and the boat is flipped over and they have to hide in this tree. Very, uh, simplistic, but, uh, very tense, palpable tension in here. I love the heck out of this one. And then Rogue, which I feel like is the one that's more well known with, uh, directed by, written and directed by Greg McLean who did Wolf Creek and this has John Jarrett who played Mick Taylor. I actually got a chance to interview him once as well. He gave really short answers, but uh, still pretty awesome to get that opportunity. And um, it's basically another tour of, uh, you know, uh, crocodiles and uh, they get knocked off the boat and on this like, little mud island. The tides come in, the gator are picking off uh, people left and right. 
Um, Rana Mitchell, who's also an Australian actor, and uh, Sam Worthington, too. They're in here. Sam Worthington did a lot of big films in here in the U.S. And also has uh, Michael Vartan, uh, a few other recognizable people in here. But uh, again, a really good one. I like towards the end where uh, the one character is in like the kind of nesting feeding area of the um, the croc. I just thought that was awesome. Both are really good, but I really think this one's underrated. And I love the heck out of Black Water, so check that out if you get a chance. Next up, the last one. <laughs> I'm gonna need a, a big glass of uh, water after this. After Midnight, which I know recently got a Blu-ray release. Uh, this has a uh, Marg uh, Helgenberger from CSI in here. It's a horror anthology movie. Um, before I get the Blu-ray, I want to check this one out. I got this one for cheap. Uh, I remember seeing it a while ago, but it's been a long time. And uh, let me know what your favorite horror anthology movie is outside of like Creepshow 1 and 2. I feel like that's usually everybody's first couple choices. Trilogy of Terror is up there too, but I feel like there's been a lot of really good uh, recent ones. ABCs of Death, VHS, different ones like that. Uh, you know, obviously sometimes a mixed bag, but still uh, some creative ideas. But basically it's about um, a college professor and he has the class come to his house and he tells them these horror stories. I remember her, she was like a, I guess a telephone operator and uh, somebody was like messing with her kind of like a cat and mouse game. And uh, the back of that looks super creepy, like that guy's face and then just that is super creeptastic. So looking forward to revisiting it because I don't remember it that well. But uh, there you go. Those were the 22 pickups. Uh, again, a lot of these ones are ones that I've uh, already done updates for and talked about, but I wanted to combine them and do a massive like update right there and uh, still kind of talk about them as well, not just quickly showing them, but try to go through there as quickly as possible. It's still turned out to be kind of a long video, but if you've seen any of these movies, I hope you don't mind that. By the way, I, you know it's all about talking movies on here, not just showing them. Um, but there you go. If you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one of these is your favorite as well. Leave me those comments down below and I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.